All right, I'm excited. We got several good things going on here. We've got sign, we've got a trail dumping out here. We got a stand for both sides. Now we're gonna start building our hidey hole food plots. So follow along. A few weeks ago, laid out this nice little hidey hole food plot. This afternoon, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be burning this off, preparing our seed bed. We've got rain in the forecast here in the next few days, so gonna get this prepped and ready. Hopefully that rain holds and we'll be broadcasting seed here soon. So you can see we've got a fire break here where we've weed eated and blowed all the duff out and all the way around, you can see that one over there all the way around this little hidey hole and we're gonna burn this. We're gonna light here. Um, the wind is, is blowing this way for the most part. So I'm gonna light on this side and we're just gonna let it back out into the plot. Low intensity fire creeping through here, getting good uh, consumption of this fuel and, and we'll just kinda go nice and easy. You can see how much duff there is. If you were gonna broadcast seed, that's gotta go through a lot of duff and you're not gonna have a, as much seed hit the ground. Our goal is to open this up and allow seed to get to the ground. And of course you can see this is Sarisa and we came in and weed eat it to kind of get a mulch layer down the ground so to carry a fire and then it kind of greened back up and so we sprayed it and it's starting to turn and dry up a little bit and enough to, to burn it off. It burned off really well. So, like look here, now that seed yeah. can make that seed to soil contact when we broadcast it in here. It's gonna, this is, this is gonna be a nice little seed bed. Well, this burn is going really good and it's really tempting to say, ah, let's just light it up and let it go and, and be done, move on to the next one. But I wanna play the patience game here because these conditions for burning today, we're, we're dry, it's warm and sunny out. We've got a lot of fuel around the area. If I just went ahead and lit this, that fire all of a sudden is now competing for oxygen out here in the middle. We're bottlenecked down tight here. That wind could swirl and we could very easily throw something across the line here. So knowing that, I'm just gonna be patient. It's backing nicely. Just let it do its thing. I don't wanna get ahead of it. And then, you know, here the last five minutes, cause a little boo-boo and have something jump and get out of control. So just gonna be patient. All right, we just finished up this burn. Everything is out and it looks awesome. This little hidey hole sits very nicely. Of course, we've got a stand here and a stand over on this other side for different wind directions. We've got a heavy trail cutting across here and we've got a Moultrie Mobile getting some great images and videos of some good deer cutting through here. The next step is to broadcast. So we've removed all the duff. We've got rain in the forecast. We're gonna wait a day or two and kind of see if that rain forecast is gonna hold true. And if it does, we're gonna be out here right before or even during the rain to broadcast seed. And that seed is gonna get great soil contact now that all that duff has been removed with fire. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery. 
Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. A couple of showers have passed through, but right before they did, Drew and I hustled, grabbed a little bit of Triple 13 and some green cover hidey ho, and we've been planting brand new hidey ho food plots. You know, we sowed the northern portion of Proving Ground. We're starting off from scratch on the southern portion, so we've weed eated Cerisa down, made a fire break, and then used fire to terminate that. And uh, we had to use herbicide in a couple places, get it browned up enough, carry a fire. And so it's black. And one thing I'll tell you about spreading seed or fertilizer on black, you can see where it all hits. You can tell your pattern really well. This soil is just basically gravel. So we're using a little bit of triple 13 to get some growth here the first year or two. And I'm doing an average of equivalent of 400 pounds per acre. So we're doing like little eighth acre plots at 400 pounds per acre. We're putting 40 to 60 pounds out, pin on the plot size and I'm using the equivalent of 100 pounds of hidey oil per acre, which on these little plots is 15 or 16 pounds. And there's more rain chances tomorrow. So between showers, we're gonna go knock out a couple more. Come on along, check out our technique. So I should tell you if we get going, I've showed this before, but I put my spreader in a tub, so whatever seed I don't get in there, I can save and throw it out. And if you're like me, you always spill some seed and just, just keeps you from doing that. And we've just got these little old spreaders so old that I tore this off and tied around the handle anymore. But anyway, it still works. And come on along and spread. Little video plot here. You can see we made a fire line and it's not black because there was nothing to burn here. And we burned and that killed a couple of saplings and cedars. And I like to go one way with about half and then the other way. Notice I'm not walking all the way to the end because my pattern's throwing 10 or 12 feet out. So I just watch. There's no need to fertilize the weeds out there. Turn my corner nice and slow. I feel like I got pretty good coverage that way. This spot's really small, so now I'm going to go this way. super fertilized, I put a little bit more than I normally would because I know I'm going to have a lot of browse pressure and I'm going to have Drew spread the seed really heavy on here also because a lot of it's going to get two or three inches tall and probably get browsed off. You know, on a plot like this, if you harvest one big doe for some venison for the freezer or a good buck, man, it's paid for itself. It's an awesome thing. And it also helps you pattern deer in the area. You know, if deer's down there 100 yards cutting through and you got a tasty salad bar up here, it's liable to cut up through here and keep on going. Put a mulchy over here, and you'll know exactly which deer are cruising through the area. I put fertilizer on. Drew's gonna apply some seed, and we got one more to go. Hopefully the weatherman's not lying and it rains again tonight or tomorrow. We've spread this right before it's supposed to rain, and that way you get really good seed to soil contact. Remember, if you don't get seed to soil contact, that seed's on top of layer duff or something, it'll get warm and wet and germinate, but the root may not make it in soil, so it dies. Just like spilling some seed in the back of your pickup, and it turns green, then it dies because there's no soil there. Got a mulch right behind us over here. We put it out and we were doing the burning. We get a pattern of what deer were just naturally walking through, kind of a timber edge here before 
we get green stuff and then after i suspect deer that were passing blow here are gonna come up the hill munch on this nice little treat before they make it over to a bigger food plot so we're kind of see how that's working out and then i'll probably put a redneck blind on a trailer so i can move it around right here in this little batch of cedars i can back it in there perfect little hunting spot it's a long ways to a big enough tree for a tree stand over here you're probably giving up 30 yards for even get to the edge of field but a, a ground blind right here would be perfect and of course blinds hold your scent a little bit better it's liable to swirl in this little closed in area here but probably get away with a lot more with the blind we keep you posted and hopefully not only just show you some trail camera pictures but bring you a hunt from this spot Planting seed, man, seeds look dead. They look about as dead as a fertilizer. But then you get a rain and it's warm and it germinates. Well, that's a great illustration of what the Creator gave for us. He came here and lived a perfect life, gave us a perfect example. Died a horrible death on a cross and then was resurrected to be our Lord and Savior. And seeds coming out of ground are a great illustration of that resurrection. I hope you take time to Listen to what creation is showing you every day, and more importantly, seek the Creator's will for your life. Thanks for watching, Growing Deer.